It's been a week now since Adobe released their generative fill tool in the new beta release. And uh, it's, the world has gone crazy. I want to show some more practical uses of Photoshop's generative AI tool. While this is in beta, if you look at the terms, there is no commercial use allowed for this tool. Now, the second thing to note, the images that are generated right now are 1024 pixels on the long edge of the image. I honestly, I don't think it's that relevant because one, we can't use these for commercial use right now. And two, it's very easy to create like a main background, find something you're happy with, and then just go over it with uh, one in one megapixel sections. The other reason I don't think it's that important is because of the way that we consume images that tends to be online, on the web, or on our phones. Having said all that, I want to show you some examples of how you can use this tool in the real world, starting with some simple examples and taking us into some more complex examples. I want to start off simple for the first example. Let's say that we have this headshot here that I did of Maggie. Maybe Maggie wants to use this on her LinkedIn profile. We shot this with an 85 millimeter uh, with window light. So in this setup, my back is against the window. I'm sitting up in the windowsill and she's about two meters away from the window in order to get the light that we need without turning the eye so up too high. So this is the image that we have, but if we want to expand on this, now it's really easy. We can take the image and then we can just expand the crop beyond the image. Keep her face centered here. I'm going to select the image and then I'm just going to invert my selection, generate the fill and give me the options so that I can easily alter this image in a way that allows it to be used in a square crop format that can then be uploaded to say LinkedIn for a profile. Okay, so now we have a few different options. Uh, this first one, this second one, and this third one, which made her sleeveless. I'm gonna use the first one as an example, and now what we could do is just see what that would look like as a profile photo. And there you go, you have a profile photo. For our next example, we'll take another photo of Maggie, but this one was done outside. We want to maybe use it for the same process. So we're going to expand the image and then fill in the area that is blank. And that is a pretty excellent job. That's the first option. There's our second option, some bokeh in the background, and we have our third option. Uh, I like the first option. That looks great. So it's a very simple solution to uh, provide us with something that we can use very quickly. For another example of something that we might need to use this for on a regular basis, this image of George was shot on a wide seamless. What I might want to do is I want to ha extend that background all the way across the image. Now it's incredibly easy. I'm just going to delete these parts here and then I can select them with the marquee key tool and then just ask Photoshop to fill those areas in. And it's going to do a lot better job than I could do. And we have a few different options and that option is great. And then I can just go in and I can clean that background up and get it to a point where I like it. Similarly, this image of George that I photographed in my old studio, there are limitations, physical limitations of the space that I had to deal with, like this ledge that runs all the way across the studio wall. But now I can get rid of the ledge, I can get rid of the corner, and then I can select my image, invert the selection, and that's much more like it. So looking at a more complex example, here's an image of Marco that we photographed at a popular hot dog stand. So let's say I want this image to be uh, in the header, the hero image of a website for a surf company or a sportswear company for whatever it is that I am using it for. In this area here off to Marco's right is a parking lot, a gravel parking lot. There are also some like garbage bins back here, an oil bin for fries, there was a recycling bin here, a large uh, telephone pole, and it all looks horrible. So I didn't shoot a wider shot because a wider shot doesn't look so good. But now what I can do when I did this photo shoot, I did it so it would look like it was photographed in Southern California, even though we're in Southern Ontario. 
So again, I'm gonna select those negative areas and fill them in. Probably gonna complete the building and then fill out the background with some trees. And that's that's what it did. And it's using the wood to sort of try and create a deck. That's not too bad, um, but that's not what we want. So what we can do is we can add a prompt and I'm going to say uh, beach. Just nice and simple, just beach. It's adding, it's adding weird people. It's adding these weird people. I'm okay with the completion of the building in this one. So I'm gonna leave that, but I'm going to expand this selection here and I'm gonna try again with beach. <laughs> he keeps giving me these, these people. So I'm gonna try ocean and beach this time. So hopefully it's not going to add people in here who are looking at Marco. So this is more of like a hut situation. That is much more like what I'm looking for. And now what I've done is I've created some copy space to put copy into a headline for the top of a website, or this could go out in an email campaign. So this image is done as an example. Let's move on to the next image. So here's an image from the same shoot, the same location. You can see it is right beside a street, but I don't want it to be beside a street. I want this to have a beach look. I'm going to use this lasso tool to do a more refined selection. I'm not gonna make it perfect right now. So now I have this area and I'm going to fill that. And again, I'm going to use the word beach. The entire point of this shoot was to have sort of a, a SoCal beach vibes. And now we have a beach, we have some straw umbrellas, we have this umbrella, and we have something, you know, with a, a little mountain in the back, some cliffs in the back. And either one of these, honestly, uh, would work well. If I wanted to expand this into a 16 by 9, again, to create a bit more of a, a hero image vibe to it, just redo this area. And now I'm not going to add anything, I just wanted to continue expanding on what is already there. Okay, so that's a lot better, but we have this weird little tent. So I'm just going to select that tent area, generate a fill and generate again, and should just remove that tent for us. And now we have an image that is, can go onto a website as a hero image. And you can use this when you're, you're doing your shoots, but you can't get to a beach like this. Then you can shoot with locations that are very similar and then adapt the background later on in post-production, which is something that we might normally have to do anyways, but now this just makes our job a lot easier to do that. So for a final example, I wanna show you how you might use it in a mood board. So let's say I wanna use this image as a mood board of a guy chilling out on a floaty in a pool in front of a nice hotel. First thing I'm going to do is expand the background then I'm going to select my subject. I'm going to invert my selection. And now I'm just going to say donut floaty in a pool. That's a half decent option. So now we can go through the same process again. I'm going to expand the crop. I'm going to make my selection, invert it, hit generate. And now I'm going to say hotel pool. All right, so this is much more in line with what I'm looking for. What I want to do now is expand my crop upwards, use the marquee tool to select the upper portion of the image. And now I'm going to say Budapest hotel. So now I'm going to say luxury French hotel. So now we have a few options. This second one looks good, but it's not perfect. We're not expecting perfect, especially if this is just a mood board. What we're looking for is we just want something that can be passable as an image that sort of gets us a result, uh, something that we could use in a mood board. So those are some of the practical applications of how you could use uh, Adobe Photoshop's generative fill AI tool to aid uh, your existing photography business and the things that you currently do uh, that maybe you weren't able to do before or allow you to do the things that you were able to do before a lot faster and a lot better. So that's it for this video. Until next time, uh, thank you very much. Take care.